Hi friends, it's time for another Jeep video. So, I'm gonna push this thing out of the garage, <laughs> quite literally. Um, the frame shop's almost ready for it, but I don't know if they're quite ready for it, but I need it out of the garage. And I'm actually gonna bring the trailer dolly in here because I don't wanna leave it out, but I wanna push the Jeep against the fence. So, yeah. Anyway, I got a bunch of shuffling to do. So I'm gonna start with uh, just opening the door. Because, yeah, it's Texas, it's summer, it's hot. It's supposed to be a high 93 today. And let me get the little truck out of the way. So, you know, oh, I don't wanna grab the key out of the Jeep before I forget about that. It's not like the steering wheel is connected to anything at this point, and there's no battery in it. So, regardless, it ain't going nowhere, not under its own power, because, yeah, the engine's over there. So first things first, I gotta get the dolly out of here. It lives back in, behind the gate. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you know I plan projects out and it just takes forever to get to them, so it just is what it is. Let me see, one glove, two gloves. Are they matching set? Oh, they are. How exciting. Let's see if we can find you guys a better spot. Yeah, that looks okay. The yard's looking a little rough. My yard guy is quitting on me this month, so that means this week. And It'd be really nice to not have all these cracks in concrete, but that ain't my cards this year. I'm about six inches short. That really sucks. So I gotta back the bus up. Now, the hard part there is the bus hasn't been started in a while. So that's its own project. All right, so the start sequence on the bus is a lot convoluted. So first we have to turn it on and then we have to go start it from the side. And the reason we have to start it from the side is that the ignition switch contacts didn't make it. But it hasn't been started in a while. But it runs just fine. We're just gonna pull it forward. I gotta wait for air pressure at this point.
called a wigwag, and it's an old school thing that alerts you that you have low air pressure. So first things first, we gotta pull it forward. And I burned out what little bit of synchronizer there was within the first few miles, so. acting like it's stuck so let me go move the thing because it's probably gonna jump when I let it go go back I've got to go forward because I got to get my wheel chalk out from behind so if you push the clutch a few times on these old things So it's acting like my brakes are stuck. It's been parked for a while. Oh, that was reversed, that's why. All right, so I got a, there we go. My clutch pedal was stuck. is up. They were stuck. So now I gotta take it out of gear, set my brake, and go start the engine the hard way because this switch is dead. I'll be right back. I hate the seat on this bus. So we're going to back it up now. A lot of things I hate on this bus. There we are. That's reverse. There's my parking bumps. That should give me enough space to uh, move the dolly. So let's check that while the bus is running. And if you guys want to see what I actually did, I just, I moved back about a foot and a half. So, and one of the things I do is I use just some dunnage back here to stop myself from backing up too far.
Whoops. So shutting it off is easy. It responds to the key to shut it off. And, uh, you know, that's all there is really to it for the bus. It still moves, even if my brakes were a little stuck. And that's my fault, because it's been sitting still for a long time. I do keep the battery on a trickle charge, so it'll start when I want it to. I really should say batteries. Looks like I need a little air there. Not a big deal. So. All right, where did those gloves go? So we're going to move these, well, my chalk blocks, all right, so let's get it ready to move. So the first thing we have to do is get out of the park, and that's going to take some keys. And it won't be back in here until the flame is straightened and the engine's ready to go in. Oh my goodness, this is tight in here. So we'll put the part of that in neutral. And oh, well, it could have been anywhere, but we're going to put it in neutral. And the transfer case is in neutral, so really the transmission should have nothing to do with this. And you know. I'm going to put a block behind it because really there's nothing to stop it from rolling straight back. And I need this to go in pieces. I need to have really good control of this because I'm doing this by myself. There's only one of me and this weighs more than I do. Um, but it's not as hard as it looks. But it's easier when you undo the emergency brake. Which you can access from either side of the vehicle. And this side has just enough room for my fat ass to walk by. 
So next time you hear somebody say the emergency brake doesn't do anything, yes it does. Yes it does. It holds the Jeep still on a flat surface. May not do much else. All right. So that's the idea. We're going to do this nice and slowly. And I think that's as good an angle as anything else. So next what we're going to do is we're going to bring it up over the bump on the, the garage door. And we're going to try not to run it over. There we go. Nice and easy. So I think you guys would benefit from a different view, as exciting as it is to watch me sweat. I think you guys would get more out of this watching from over here. So anytime you think it's getting away from you, you just stuff a block under it. Now in this case, it's time for me to start doing my turn. And power steering is by fat ass. Which just means I turn the wheels because they're not connected to anything. And the reason you see me grabbing the Jeep by the wheels is it's just simple physics. I have a whole lot more torque using the wheel as my lever. This is not going to be so much fun here in a, in a few seconds, because now I'm going to start having to go uphill. But first, we got to get these wheels cranked. And we really only need this on one wheel. That's as far as those turn.
So once you lift it up just a little bit, it's very easy to turn the wheels. And then in this case, it's gonna to wanna to go downhill, so I'm gonna block it. So what I gotta do is I gotta shimmy it into where I want it, which would be a piece of cake if it was running. But it's not. There we go. Yeah. By chasing the chalk block, I can stop and rest whenever I want to, like now. All right, so I'm gonna take a little bit more momentum back here. Yeah, a little bit more. because we're still gonna have to shimmy. And it's only 93 out today here in Houston. So it's fucking hot, to put it mildly.
So I think that's the last time we'll have to shimmy like that. We'll see. Quite heavy. That's as far as I want it. It's, it's where it needs to be. It's not perfect, but it will work. Oh, yeah, that doesn't work. Unfortunately, the transfer case is disconnected from the cable, so it doesn't matter that I yanked on that. It's not going anywhere. So I don't need this in the garage, but I do need it outside the fence so that I didn't have to juggle the Jeep and it more than once. So the simplest thing to do is just pull this in here. That's still not really where I need it, but it'll suffice for the moment. Hopefully today or tomorrow, the Jeep goes to the frame shop and then this can go back behind the fence. Oh my goodness.